Hello and welcome to my second attempt at Crastorio 2 space exploration. Now in my first attempt I made a catastrophic unrecoverable error and as a result we are where we are. You know it, it was a simple error in its nature. I got one thing very very wrong but it led to a the whole design of the factory was based on this number, and the number was wrong, and it was numbered by a factor of many, many numbers. And so we're starting again. You know, all of those videos are there. If you want to see how I made that mistake, then they're available to you. Anyway, we're starting from scratch, and it, it does allow me to correct one of the things that I got wrong when I set up the first attempt. So let's start again, and let's correct that one thing so we don't make it again. Um, that one thing was to change this thing up here from the vanilla to the space exploration default. Yeah, simple, simple mistakes. Um, I'm still going to up all of the resources because I still technically don't know what I'm doing. You know, I just made a massive mistake. Don't really want to go hard on myself too much. So let's up this up to what, what I would normally do. Okay. Terrain. Oh, no cliffs. That's the only thing I changed there. Starting map size, I'm going to give myself some room. And that's it. That's, 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 that's it. Everything. Let's go. Okay, so, first things first, we, oh, we don't need you. First things first, we need to bash our fists into the ground and mine some resources. So that's the first thing as always. Where's the coal? That's normally the first thing. Oh, what, what on earth? Okay, sweet. We are making some really, really good progress. Um, where are we on the time? 11 and a half hours. I'm pretty sure I was another 10 or so hours later down the line on the on my first attempt at this thing. Um, and in general, I'm, I'm much happier with it. I don't know, you may not have been watching, but in, in that first series of aborted SpaceX Crestoria 2 factory, um, I was a little bit displeased with the proportionality of my starter factory in that it was a little bit too wide and a little bit too narrow. I was also a little bit unhappy with kind of its irregularity. It wasn't a proper shape. So I'm, I'm, I'm addressing both of those things here. I've made it a little bit bigger, wider, but so that means it'd be less long. And that hopefully means it'll have some good proportionality to it. And I've drawn a line at the bottom so that's where it's going to end. So it's going to be a nice straight line. It's going to be a nice square, rectangular, straight edges. It's going to be much better, much happier. And the benefit of some hindsight, knowing knowing how big this thing is going to be before I build it. You know, that was kind of the problem with my first attempt. I didn't really know how big it was going to be. Now I know what's going in it. I can kind of juggle things around to make it the size that I want. But that's kind of by the by. Because the important thing that I want to talk about is the general base design. So I'm looking at this map primarily i've been looking at this map for a while whilst i'm constructing all this stuff in the background 
and I'm thinking, okay, how, what, 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 where am I going to put stuff? Where's the, what's the general architecture that I'm going to work towards here? Because it's important to get that stuff right. So the first kind of principle that I'm dealing with is that if I'm building a really, really big factory, then that factory kind of imposes itself on the world. You know, if I'm building something big, then I need to generate economies of scale. And that means that certain things need to line up perfectly. So it just means that that work, that factory needs to impose itself on the world. So I have a whole lot of landfill. I've got to fill in a whole lot of lakes. I can't really work around what the map gives me. I've just got to impose myself on it. Um, so if I'm building a slightly smaller factory, which is kind of where I'm going with, with this one, not hugely smaller. It's still going to be pretty significant. Don't, don't. <laughs> we're not we're not going to veer too far away from the previous strategy. It's, it's going to be maybe 30 to 50 percent of what I had in that first go. Um, but because it's going to be smaller, I'm thinking, OK, maybe I can work my way around the map a little bit better. Think things through a little bit clearer. Again, the benefit of some thought, some hindsight of knowing how big this is going to be means that I can just position things a little bit better. So I'm looking at the map and I'm thinking, OK, where do I put stuff? So my first kind of thought was, well, let's let's start building over here. You know, let's do what I did before. Let's create a bus that encompasses the uh, these core seams. So let's have a bus that runs side to side that encompasses these three seams. And, and let's start building stuff either side. The problem was, well, sooner or later, I'm going to start building up against this uranium ore. And I really want to use this uranium ore. So, okay, next idea. Well, this, this part of the map down here doesn't look like it's got a whole lot of resources in it. And this looks like a fairly clean part of the map. So let's build the factory here. This that makes sense to me. And let's stick let's let's continue with that idea. Let's have a bus that runs along here and encompasses these three seams. And let's have a vertical bus which encompasses this one as well. So we're gonna have kind of this T-shaped structure. And that's how I'm kind of kind of work my way around the map that I've been given. Now, once once that's kind of in my mind, it's okay, where once what what then? So the next step for me is, well, this is a step that, that takes place a long time ago, but it's important for the story here. I'm trying, what I try to do with these big factories, I try and group stuff together, similar processes in similar places, so that I can deal with the factory in maybe five or six big chunks. And some of those, some, some of those things wander around. Like I think back in the day, years and years ago, I used to put batteries in amongst... Uh, my oil production and at some point in time I decided that wasn't the way to go the reason being was because sulfuric acid the thing that goes into batteries is basically it needs to go everywhere in the factory so the idea of routing some extra sulfuric acid to my shopping mall to be able to make batteries that's not uh, that's not unreasonable plastics for it to give you an alternative plastics I make in oil and I always have done and the reason is because it relies on petroleum and I and if I put plastics in my shopping mall then I would have to route that petroleum through the factory only for plastic. So it makes sense to me to put plastics in oil. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to group these things into uh, batches of factory. Now, from the previous one, what I have is I've got oil and I've got copper. I've also got computer chips. And those three need to be kind of close together, particularly computer chips and copper. And then somewhere close by, I need a whole load of greenhouses. In that first series, I didn't quite get the greenhouses. I was just about to build it, and then the whole mistake became apparent. So those kind of four chunks are related. And then we've got oil, and then we've got gases and chemicals, and then we've got stone, glass, silicon, quartz, and then rare metals. So we've basically got eight sections, and... You know, I'm trying to... Is it eight or nine? I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying to basically position those eight or nine elements. So, let me go into a little bit of detail into exactly what I mean. So, from that first playthrough, what I've ascertained is that the block that I want to use for iron and steel is going to be the same width as the block that I want to use for copper, but because the iron and steel has the steel element in it, that element is going to be longer. So in geometrical terms, let me just build something on the screen. Okay. So I want you to imagine this is a massive block of factory that represents iron and steel, and that these two blocks represent copper. In that first playthrough, the way I arranged the factory 
was like this. So I, I had iron and steel, and then I had copper like so. But because they were different depths, they didn't really line up with each other very well. It, it created this kind of gap here that I, it was, it was, I didn't like it. It made, it made me unsatisfied. So now I'm looking, for, okay, how do, I make, how do I not have that problem? And the problem is to move that block over to this sort of orientation. So that because it's the same width, I can use the same sort of factory. And here's my thinking. Because I've got this kind of T-junction bus in mind, I need a process. The, the processes on the right-hand side of this bus, if I make them smaller, then I can feed other processes from this bus that run along here. I can come down. If I have this huge ginormous block here, then it really confines what I can do up here. Whereas if I have the huge iron steel block over here, it's kind of it doesn't matter because I've got all this space over on this side of the map and then I can put copper on this side of the bus it's kind of small and neat and com compact and that will make I think that makes better sense for the proportionality of the factory and then once I've got those two down I'll have uh, chemicals and gas and petroleum and oil and stuff and I'll have those 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 two blocks are about the same size so I'm gonna have one on either side of the bus I think the, I can get the same width to work. Um, I think that will work fine. And then once I get down to the bottom here, we'll deal with stone, glass, silicon on one side, and then rare metals on the other. Computer chips, I think I'm going to nestle in this little corner here. Now, in terms of production, as I said, I'm going to aim for, I think for iron and steel and copper, I'm going to make about a third of what I made in the first factory. But I'm going to build in the capacity to double that. So I can get up to two thirds if I need to. So it's, all that is is just a few extra conveyor belts, a few extra tiles gap, so I can route extra stuff in and out if I need to. That's not the you know that I'm just going to build that in. And then, but then when I get to computer chips, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build for a hundred percent. So I'm going to build for two times, three times the amount of copper that I'm actually producing, and hopefully that will allow me to have you know, further production down the lines. Because it's, if, if computer chips are going to be nestled right in this corner and I'm going to build right around it, there's going to be no ex potential opportunity to make it bigger. Um, whereas if I, make, if I just build it as big as it needs to be, double the size, then I think that would work fine. So that's kind of where my mind is right now in the larger sc scheme of things on the big factory design. I like it. I do like it. I just now need to put it down. I mean, we're a long, we haven't even started it yet. I'm talking about a lot of stuff we haven't even started. I haven't even finished the starter factory yet. All right, so let's get rid of this because I need conveyor belts. We are short on conveyor belts. In fact, let's go get some more iron. Um, let's make some more conveyor belts because I'm short of those. And let's finish off this starter factory so we can crack on with the big one. <laughs> Starter factory done, 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 done. Wah, maybe not totally done. Uh, anyway, we're, I'm really happy with it. I think it's worked out really, really well. Um, I'm particularly pleased that um, I didn't have to move the camera. You know, I set the camera up more or less at the beginning and I finished the factory as I was reaching the end of the screen. Like I filled the map, filled the screen with the factory. As, but it's just been really nice. I really like it. Um, when I say that it's not really finished, it's because there might be a few other processes over here that I might want to make. Like, I've got a list, 
There's a few things still on the list, like um, a fuel refinery would be nice. Valves. I don't have any valves in here either. And there might be a few units that I might want to make. I know, it's mostly done. I really want to get on with the next thing. Um, mostly because I'm impatient, but also because there might be some railway lines that might need to come through here, and I might need to adjust and move something. Not totally sure of how it's going to work with the geometry, so uh, there's no point totally... I've got it pretty finished. Anyway, it's, gonna, it's got all of the things that I need to make the next thing, and that's really the important thing. So, next thing is iron. Um, I've been playing around with the recipes, and I think I'm going to go with the similar sort of recipe sort of formula that I went with the first time around, which is this one, which is that we put 36 ore in, and we get 45 plate. Um, and I'm going to have two of these blocks, and then I'm going to add in the potential for two further of these blocks down the line if I need it, if I want it. We'll see. And I've got a slightly new geometry, a slightly new layout in mind. I've been thinking about how I want to lay it out. I think I've got a, a cooler, a much more elegant, eh, a bit, bit more fancy way of laying it down. That's that's probably the best way of saying it. So, let's, uh, for the first time this series, this new series, let's build some paths, move the camera, and let's crack on with some iron. Iron and steel, done. Oh, this junction's a bit of a mess. But anyway, we'll figure this. <laughs> now, this is actually my third attempt at building a block for iron and steel. And in every attempt that I've made so far, it's made this same kind of shape. This same kind of long, thin rectangle. Every time, I've tried different setups. I've tried positioning things in different ways. Tried lots of di three different approaches, and each time it's... I didn't want it to be this, I wanted it to be a bit more square up. You know, I was kind of aiming for somewhere about here. Uh, it's, it's down, it's down. Um, or, or at least half of it anyway. You know, the idea being that I'm gonna put some train stations here and then if I want that double capacity somewhere down the line, then I'll just copy this over on this side so it will stick out a little bit. That's a long ways off. Um, and what I wanna do now is I wanna carry on with my list. And the next thing on the list that I wanna deal with is iron no oils that's the next thing and obviously i need more space i need some yeah i need to extend my perimeter wall and beat back some biters but yeah that's next so beat back some biters make some paths and then i can build some oil And there we have oil. I, I kind of, I've kind of followed the same philosophy that I followed in the last factory, the aborted one, in that 
I've I've split it into kind of three different uh, three different buses to a certain extent. I've got this kind of little bus up here and a little bus down here, and these will kind of deal with the the, the flows of the material uh, and the process that I need right now. Because I mean, there's a certain amount of oil that I don't really know about. I'm going to need in the future. Uh, I need to build in a certain amount of expansion to allow that. So I've, that's what I did in the in the last factory, and I've tried to kind of follow the same philosophy for this one because it kind of it gives me this big gap down the middle. So I've dealt with these, the, these flows are the, the important ones for now. And then any important flows that I figure out for the future, I can bring in down in the, down the middle of here. And I've had to adapt it slightly because um, the block is a lot wider than the last one. So I've tried to match that by splitting these processes up. So originally, I only had two banks of plastics. These, these four processes here are dealing with plastic. Originally, I only had two banks, but each of those banks had... 24 chemical plants in it um, and that's how I built the rest of the factory but for this one because I wanted to stretch it out I've split those into two and I've kind of followed that all the way through so we've got uh, plastic 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 sulfuric acid I've left sulfuric acid about the same size because I always seem to produce too much of it anyway um, then three banks of explosives um, and then three banks of sulfur in in this gap down here we've got lube over here then we've got the stuff to deal with fuel. So I think this is advanced fuel, uh, other kind of fuel, uh, solid fuel. Then I've got this big gap. Uh, and then I, this will be kind of, you know, if I've got some small processes in the future that I need to, to make, then I can deal with that by bringing the belts in here and make, make that stuff in here. I've got some bigger processes, then I can bring this all the way through. The idea being, you know, I'm going to put some stations here to feed in iron potentially that iron needs to go both ways for this second half that I'm going to build over here. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the oil. So I'm going to put the oil train stations in here and then potentially the same kind of oil set up over on the other side of this kind of train stations. Um, so what, what I like to do, you might not have been present for the first episode, but what I like to do is I like to squeeze the things making the liquid in between the things producing the liquid. And that's what I did for iron. And if we come and have a look up here, these furnaces are going to be producing molten iron. And that molten iron is going to come out and it's going to go both ways. And then we've got, so we've got iron processing over here and we've got steel processing in the middle. Then we've got more furnaces that will inject more molten iron and that will go both ways. And then we've got the iron over here. So I've tried to squeeze the things making the liquid in the middle of the things using the liquid and I've, I tried to keep it symmetrical just because I like to do symmetrical things. And if we think of the trains with the oil setup, we can think of the trains doing the exact same thing. So the trains are introducing liquid into the system. And I want to kind of generate an even flow, an even flow from those trains. So if we can squeeze the trains, which are the things producing the liquid, in the middle of the refineries, which are the things making the liquid. You know, I'm going to have another banker of these refineries on the other side of the train stations. Then we're doing the exact same thing as we were doing with the furnaces, which is we are squeezing, as I said, we are squeezing that thing, the thing that makes the liquid, in between the things using the liquid. And hopefully this bus of these buses of pipes, I'm just going to carry on through all the way through, and though they will just feed in the same way, we'll get we'll get some sort of flow, probably some from this way, some that way. It will go where it needs to go, and then if I need anything else, it can come through the middle. Um, one other thing about this kind of middle bus idea that is useful. So in, in the current plan is to build the gases and chemical stuff over here. So we're going to have this bus here, which is going to deal with all of the outputs from these blocks. Well, oh, pardon me. And then on the other side of that bus, we're going to have gases and chemicals. But most of the things in gases and, and chemicals are made of like el electrolysis units, which are five by five, whereas most of the things in oil are made with chemical plants, which are three by three. So it's much easier to have a much to have a compact factory for the oils part of the factory because the fundamental unit of it is only three by three. So but over on the other side of the bus, we're dealing with a whole load of stuff which is made of five by five, which is going to be a whole lot more difficult to build with. It's going to be much bigger and much more cumbersome. So by building it in this way, I can use all of this space to build these cumbersome units, and then I can output into this kind of central bus over on this side for the gas and chemicals. And then if I'm smart and clever about how I position it, then I can output those chemicals. And those, if I need those chemicals, I know that I need oxygen. I already have set up something here for hydrogen. 
then those pipes that deliver those things can just travel straight down wherever positioning they are in the bus over on this side for gases and chemicals it can just travel all the way down and feed whatever it needs to feed so by splitting the oils and chemicals like the way i have i've given myself more space when i get to gases and well sorry did i say that right by building it the way i have for oils i've given myself uh, more space for gases and chemicals which are going to be on the other side of the bus and are going to occupy I mean this is what I'm dealing with blocks it's going to occupy the same size block so that's that's kind of where my mind is at at the moment it's a good design I like it um, I liked it when I did it in the last factory and, I've, and I've, I really I think this is the first time I've tried to I've, I've approached oil in this manner and I think it's because I don't really know it's, it's the first time I've really approached oil with this kind of stage process where I know up to now where i'm not what i need but i don't know anything else in the future and I, I don't think i've approached um factorio with that same sort of scenario but there's another thing that i want to talk about and that is the pulverizers these core seam fragments so this was the the, the fundamental mistake that i made in the last factory um i i massively overestimated what those core seam fragments were going to be producing it was a mistake i'm not going to go through it um so in that last factory, because I, I underestimated it, overestimated it by a factor of six. So when I was looking at the formulas for core seam fragments, it looked like it was going to be a very, very useful source of materials. And so I wanted to deal with the kind of the puzzle that that represented in, in a very serious manner. And I felt like the factory that I was designing was going to was going to deal with those elements in that scene. It, it was going to do it. But because I got the math so wrong, the serious nature of that is, is completely misplaced. So... I mean, I'm still going to have pulverizers in this factory. You know, I'm not going to ignore them. The, 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 the one of the aborted one is I put the, the, the pulverizers in the center. I put it right in the middle. It's what I, I always have like a centerpiece in these factories about what I consider them the most important thing. And when I set out on that aborted factory, I consider those pulverizers to be the most important thing. Everything, everything was kind of built around it. Whereas with this one, that's not what's happening. Um, I'm good, just going to find a space in the factory for these pulverizers to go. Um, it will just be in a gap somewhere. And then they'll, f but I'm still going to build the factory with those kind of same redundancies in mind. So if you weren't there, well, the problem is that the these core seam fragments, let's see if I can find it. I, I don't think I've got a thingy set up. Oh. oh, no, I have. Here we go. I just haven't got any numbers with it. These core seam fragments output a whole medley of ingredients and, and stuff, which is very, very useful. But if we. If we need all of these, but say if we need all of these, but we don't, we aren't using enough stone, then the stone will block up and it will stop anything else useful from being produced. So it's it's a puzzle in the sense that we want to build a factory that can deal with these outputs when we need them, and we need a fact we want to build the factory to be able to deal with the ingredients when we don't need them as well. And what the way in engineering terms, the way that we phrase that is is called redundancy. So we're trying to build the factory to do a, a two certain events and those events might be similar you know stone into block we're going to be doing stone into block two different ways to deal with this and it's the same fundamental process but we need to separate it because the the overflow material we have to get that out of the system as much as quickly as possible whereas the primary benefits of that so say we've got a whole load of stone block and that's going to somewhere that's making chemical plants i think it goes into chemical plants then those chemical plants will just take blocks whenever they need it and that's not going to be a permanent source so if we're producing an excess amount of stone and but we aren't building chemical plants at that moment in time then there's nowhere for that stone to go so we need to build a system in that deals with that excess stone so that it can go somewhere whilst we're not using it because you know and that's just one of these elements we need to build a system in that deals with iron and, and then copper and all of this stuff we need to build some redundancy factory systems to deal with it and although it tripped me up in the last one and i set it up as a centerpiece and all that other gump i'm still going to do it and i'm still going to address it in the exact same way so at the start of this oil process in the same way i did in that aborted factory i've got some very specific oil refineries which are going to deal with that oil overflow because one of these ingredients is oil and yes we can maybe flare it off but i want to use it if i can so that oil any excess oil and i've had a look through the, the, the some of the recipes and some of the recipes that there's the, the output is oil as well so it might not just be from the pulverizers where this excess oil is coming from so any of that excess oil gets moved and transported to these kind of 12 refineries 
and these will output to this bank of pipes as a primary and I'm going to try and control the amount of liquid that enters this system from the main refineries to allow there to be a certain amount of slack in this system so whatever oil gets put into these refineries there will always be somewhere for it to go um, and I'm going to deal with this with all of these things are the same I'm going to deal with the redundancy in the exact same way that's what I'm trying to get at man it's a mouthful so when I set down iron I set it up in the in the same way so we've got two belts here which are dealing with any outflow any excess amount of iron that's in the system and this could be coming from the pulverizers it could also be coming from from my Crestoria experience it could also be coming from uranium power because when we process uranium power I haven't checked, but when we did it, when we processed uranium power in uranium fuel cells in Crestorio, it outputs stone and iron ore as an as an excess as a byproduct. So that's got to go somewhere. And this probably and again, I've looked through the recipes, and I seem to have found a few places where this iron ore is coming from. So these two belts here, these are going to get go somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where yet. That might be decided in the future. They're going to go somewhere where I can burn this iron ore, and it will just get lost in the system, so that. Um, it, it gets flushed out and that's what we're trying to do we're trying to flush out all of these products so that if we need iron then it goes to somewhere where iron is used usefully and productively and efficiently but if we don't need the iron ore then it goes somewhere to be burnt in an inefficient process so that it we, it just gets lost in the system as, as efficiently as possible that's the idea i don't what i don't want to do is put any of this in a box you know i don't want to send this to a bot to a, i don't want to send the stone to an assembly machine that makes landfill because eventually that landfill is going to fill up and i, I don't want that i want to build in systems that the factory deals with this automatically autonomously without me having to worry about it and that's what i'm doing with these redundancies so so far We've got some redundancy built in for iron ore, and we've got some redundancy built in for oil. And in each of the rest of the factory unit, the factory blocks that I've been talking about up to now, we're going to be dealing with the exact same. We're going to be dealing with them in the exact same way. Whew, right, that's a whole lot of stuff. Right, let's go on with the next thing. So the next thing is stone, glass, silicon, quartz. Yeah, get on with it. stone done you know this is going down a lot easier than the first abandoned factory was i mean where are we with the time 41 and a bit you know i think that my starter factory took me about 30 hours in that first abandoned factory you know thinking you know thinking about it i like if i'm just thinking about it just about me then i'm probably telling myself that that's because i know what's coming but really we we're, we're just dealing with crestorio and this is my third real go at Crestoria. What's probably actually changed it? What's actually made the difference is choosing the right map type so that the biters aren't bothering me all that much. Because the biter, evolution fact, I'm, I'm certain at this point in the factory, the other one, the one I left behind, it was about 80 odd percent. So they're, they're just, I, I'm, that's probably why. They're leaving me alone and it's just letting me, allow me to build just in peace and quiet. It's lovely, really, really lovely. So anyway, <laughs> wandering off topic there. Stone to stone block, and I've approached it kind of the same way that I approached with oil, and in in, a, in kind of combination with the previous factory, in that it's basically the same factory that I had that down last time, except because I've got this wider block, this longer block, I'm trying to squeeze, trying to stretch it over. I've just made the processes a lot more simple, so well, I've just halved them. So whereas before, this is the let's go through it these this this first block here this is going to deal with stone excess now this is a much smaller block than in the abandoned factory and the reason is simple it's because the formula for these coursing fragments is going to output much less stone so i'm having to deal with the potential output the potential excess that i need to deal with is only 20 stone whereas it was like 60 or 70 odd before in the other one so it's a whole different problem that i was trying to solve this one, I need much less furnaces to deal with the problem. So that's what these two banks, this this first bank on either side of the bus are doing. Then we've got a whole load of furnaces which are dealing with the primary blocks. So this will go somewhere where I need it. These blocks are going to go to green chips to be turned into a green chip, or to be turned into a stone tablet, which will then subsequently get turned into a green chip. We'll get there much, much later. 
Then we've got gold, no, uh, silicon in here, quartz, glass, sand. And then I've kind of reflected it. it it's not quite perfect. I've had th th this side, we've got six crushes. This side, we've got five because that's what I could fit in the block. But everything else is reflected fine. So we've got the same again, just on the other sides. We've got glass, uh, quartz, silicon. Yeah, nice. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm not going to build the paths in because I don't want to close myself in just yet. Um, it, I, 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 I'm going to move the camera over and start dealing with rare metals in a moment. And my, I mean, ideally, I'm going to try and make the same block size work. I'm going to try and make it so that the path is perfectly in line underneath, just like this one is in here. That's what I want to happen. Um, it really depends on whether I can make it happen or not. Um, now... Next stage is, what I really need to do is I need to work out bus, the bus. I need to work out what's going in the bus. I need to work out how big it needs to be. I need to work out how much allowance I need to give myself because, once again, we don't really know what we're dealing with. So I'm going to make a list of all of the things that are going in the bus, all of the gaps and everything else, and then maybe come up with a number for what I'm going to allow myself. But that's all another discussion for another episode because that's episode one done. A bit longer than usual. Normally, I like to get the start of factory done in episode one, and then that's probably where I leave it. But you know, with the whole aborted attempt, it was probably I wanted to I wanted to give you something a bit more meat to the bone for this first episode. So I hope it's been good. Till next time.